She broke, I guess she may have broke both, both her ankles, but when she got that low shoulder. About but, Judy, you said she, No, that's his mother. It's, oh, okay. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Somewhere up where I was from, I don't remember where it was. There was a, another kid that went missing, was like 12 years old or something. And uh, I didn't see anything else. I'm like, Where's that family? <clears throat> I've got an unspoken request that's really important to me. If y'all would remember, and also, uh, would y'all remember my sons? I was talking to Scotty a while ago. Tried, I told him, I said, son, you need to get back to church. I know, I, every time I say that, he says he knows it. And uh, I'm sure he does. But let's just hope we don't you know, put it off too long. Mighty God. I, I got a phone call before church uh, from Sister Carol Kurt's brother. Sister Carol that used to come here passed away. Her brother is burying his daughter tomorrow. She overdosed. She was, I'm not sure exactly how old, I think maybe in her 30s, maybe, possibly 40s. She was pretty young and she overdosed. And uh, they called and said, please remember him. He's having a hard time with it. Yeah. And uh, the funeral's tomorrow, so remember that thing. Let's all go for the Lord in prayer. Father, today, God, as we come to you, we want to you. We put our faith and our trust in the Lamb of God today. Father, you're a merciful Savior, God. We'd ask you, God, that you would have your way in this service tonight. Let your spirit, oh God, strengthen us and help us, God, to grow in your ability. Let us have ears to hear the word tonight, God. Teach us all that we can be taught out in your life, God. Let us walk in the light, Jesus, that we don't stumble in the darkness of this world. Let us keep our eyes upon the prize, Jesus Christ. We're thankful for blood. Move, God, for our people. Move my cousin, God. Lord, you're a healer. Praise God, move to Jesus, God. Move to all these God, friend and sister. Lord Jesus, praise God for all these others, God, who are to try to spoke a request. Lord, I love and honor you today, Father. We give you praise tonight. We just ask you to have your way in the midst tonight, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
And you know, when he lived in the world, he died. He was saying, praise Jesus. He was shouting, speaking in tongues. Praise God. What kind of a testimony to that give? Mighty God. He's 94 year old, and he was still getting along pretty good. But he never failed. Anytime he was around him, he'd be talking like he's talking to himself. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. He doesn't like that. Well, he's coming soon.
Brother Shreds gets from us. It's where you get fed. Thank you, Master Brady. You can go and watch YouTube at a hospital when there ain't nothing like even the house of God. And ain't nothing like building presents in the house of God. I just pray that I just worship you. This world is not my home. God has laid something on my heart. I'm going to ask the pastor at the ball and the service is over with. We'll go 
go with that. But I appreciate you, love you for everything he means to me. Amen. And y'all just pray for me, help our family. At this time, we were dealing with our, my sister's up in age. She's getting up in age, and she's going to be by long. I'm praying God will keep her health, but she's really going great. But the doctor said, the reason why you're doing so good, you're keeping active. Just keep active. Try your best to keep active. And she does. She, we there this whole week. She has been constantly nor as much as we are. Uh, and, and one thing's for us, Emily, please sit down. But she don't. She just likes to get up and go do it. But God's blessed her so many, 82 years of life, and they had 62 years, I believe they were married together, so God has surely blessed them. And I love the Lord tonight and appreciate you.
I don't even want to take a step until he says to take the step. If he says stand still, I'm going to stand still. If he says to move, I'm going to move. Amen? Because that's what it's about for the field is obeying the voice of God. When God says to move, it's time for the church to move. Amen? Move with what the Holy Ghost said. That's why so good. Stop by Holy Ghost and tell me what to do. Stop by Holy Ghost and tell me what to do. Stop Appreciate all of he's done for me, you know, and uh, I've been in this a long time, but I I know it don't it ain't how long you've been in it. It's 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 what you do for God, you know, and, and stay on your feet for the Lord and stay in, in the church, you know. So I appreciate God, appreciate his love and uh, uh thank him for uh everyone that come, praise God and Amen. Uh, thank him for this good church. Praise God. Yes. I believe it's the people that really live right here. Praise God. Yes, Jesus. I thank Jesus for everything he means to us. Praise God. Thank God for my kin people. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, there's a lot of men, but there's some of them still out, you know. And uh, I, I just appreciate God for all things. Pray for me. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Anybody else got 
I thank the Lord for being here. I thank for saving. Thank showing me the right way. I read the book of Acts 19 chapters and have received the Holy Ghost since you believe. I said, well, that's me. So I had to go get baptized in Acts 238. When I first got in, I didn't know nothing about the word, nothing. But the Lord showed me. Yes, the Lord. I thank the Lord for it. Y'all pray for me. Yes, you can. Anybody else?
said, I always remember two choices. I said, don't go out of this world without listening. I said, listen to your wife. She said, but Christian. I said, make sure you make the right choice. I said, you don't need to make it after you leave. I said, you may try to hear where your life so. So anyway, it, it, it's a joy to talk to people about the Lord. That's, maybe that's what I'm saying. Uh, and there's not enough. Lord, she got all them soldiers. But a lot of them don't want to go to work, I think. So we need to push. I just, I just like to see somebody here. Every time I want, I witness somebody, they want to come here, but it's too far off. You know, they, they live far away. Well, I can't drive that far, you know. And I wish God would give me somebody up close that could come here, you know, and, and, and worship here and find And like I say, uh, uh, night before last, was that Sunday? This guy pulled up out here. He, he asked me this question. He says, is, uh, what name is this? What's the name of this uh, church? And I told him, you and God, Church of Jesus. Well, you can church you Jesus only, or you know? And, and I say, he's looking for a church what, what, what somebody's taught him, he, he didn't want Jesus. I said, come on in and set one. There's one, one message, then make up your mind. But he, he didn't get out of the truck. So, but we lost one there. So that's, that's you know, Lord, I, I thank you for, like I said, I thank you for in my life, as long as I've been in it. And, and I remember before I got saved, there people would cuss around me, and I, I, I just didn't, wouldn't take that. I, I said, no, don't keep it, don't get cussing God. You know, and, they, and I was a sinner, but I never, something I've never done on a, a job. So, anyway, that's, that's kind of, get busy and say, do something to witness. If we got to drive our way, yes. so Lord, just, just do it. it it's going to mean a lot. It's, it's a lot for God, because I know they say only 10% these ties, only about 10% uh, witnesses. And we should not be that way. We should do what God said in that Bible. That's part of that Bible. So, so I love all you guys, and I, I'm, I'm so thankful for what God gave me. <coughs>
Jesus. Therefore, hear 
you nations, and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O word, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of thy fault, because thou hast not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. And that's, you may have to see. You know, the Lord, he's called us out, and he, he's called us out for a purpose. Uh, Nor he says, you know, to lift up a banner, to hold up the standards. You know, and we're here to, to keep the judgment of God. But throughout the ages of time, from Adam and Eve on to where we're at today, people want to live everything the way they want to live. They want to do what they want to do in their own way because they follow after the flesh of this life. And, and what it is, you know, God said, you know, to seek out the old path when you find it, walk therein. And I'm grateful for the old path because it's kept me all these years. You know, I'm not saying I've never made a mistake because I have. I failed God, but God has always got me back on track and got me back on the right path. And that's what it's all about. Yep. We're going to have to serve God in the pureness of holiness if we're ever going to make heaven our home tonight. Praise God. People want to live. They want to live like the world, and, and they want to do the things that the world does, but they want, they want to reap the good things of God. But God's going to pour down a judgment on them. Amen. And there's going to come a time that we're going to, if we don't make the choice of serving Him with pureness of heart, amen, we're going to end up in hell if we don't serve Him right. So we need to stay on this old path tonight, praise God, and live clean and holy and keep the laws and the commandments of Jesus Christ. And it seems like here lately, each time it's my time, it seems like this county comes out over and over, but that's just what it's all about tonight. We're going to have to live pure and holy before God if we're ever going to make heaven our home. You know, what really, I wrote this little thing on Facebook, I said, what's wrong with living right? There's nothing wrong tonight, church, with living right. Uh -huh. Serving God with whole heart. Yes. But you know, there's a lot of people tonight, amen, they're, they're, they're wanting to go after the world and they're wanting to reap the goodness of God, but God's got other uh, plans for that way, you know, because he said they, they turned and they walked away from the truth of God's word. And, you know, I I'm, I'm just want the, God to use me tonight to say that we're going to have to stay on the old path of God. You know, when Eve and them sinned there in the garden, God, you know, God was merciful. God took them out of the garden and put them on their way, and he made a way for them to return back to him. And that's the way it is. We, we fail God. We get off the path sometimes over ignorant things of life, but then he brings us back, and I'm grateful for a merciful God. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for a God that loves me enough that he was willing to die on the cross of Calvary and shed his blood for me and made a way for me to return back to him wholeheartedly. Yeah. You know, and that's why God wants the world. He wants the world, the people that, uh, there's a lot of people in this world tonight that are saying they, they're Christians, Amen. But they ain't bearing no fruit tonight. Praise God, because their mouth is full of guile and all these things. Amen. Amen. And God is is getting tired of this. Amen. Amen. I know. Uh, sometimes maybe we shouldn't bring these things up. But you know, you can learn a quite a bit of things off of YouTube when you look at these people that call themselves men of God. And they, they use foul language right in the pulpit. Yeah. And that's abomination unto God. Amen. Praise God. And the sad thing about it is tonight, amen, the people in the congregation cheer them on like they're doing something great. Amen. I'm going to say this tonight, not meaning, and I don't think Brother Larry's ever going to do this, but if I ever hear him use a cuss word in this, I'm going to call him down tonight. I'm not going to clap for you, Brother Larry. I'm not going to clap for you, Brother Bo. Praise God or James. Amen. I believe God's got a people that's holy and Amen. pure to God. Amen. Yeah. It's time tonight, amen, that people walk in the right way. Praise God and stay on that straight and narrow path. Praise God that God set before his people. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. We, we, we play with God too much. We think 
I think sometimes we try to push God. Push Him as far as we can without really getting in trouble. Amen. Amen. Praise God that God said, Come out from among my people and be separated tonight. Praise God, that's what we need to do. We need to stand firm on the Word of God. You know, it's like the man that was talking about uh, the drug addicts and all these people like that. Praise God. You know, there's help for the drug addicts. Amen. There, there's help for the whoremongers and the doctors and the fornicators. Praise God. But they're going to have to come in the same way that we did. Amen. By the grace of God. Amen. Amen. That Jesus Christ cry them out. Praise God that God clean them up. Praise God. And they ain't nothing. Amen. Anybody can do about it. Praise God. But God himself, we can pray and seek God for our families. You know, I tried to get my son to come tonight. Amen. Praise God. But no, he had other excuses. Praise God. The people's going to be without excuse one day. Praise God. Because God is getting tired of it. Glory to God. God is getting tired. Amen. Brother Larry preached this word the other night. And I think it was about three years ago I preached something like it. The door's getting ready to close on the Gentiles. Praise God. And when that door closed, amen, no matter how much my son or how much my daughter begged to get in, how much they cried and uh, all these things, they're not making an end. And that goes for you all family too. Praise God. Because God's got a set time in the life. Praise God. And when that door's closed, it's over for the Gentiles. Amen. Glory to God. And that's the reason God is calling out now for those, glory to God, that He's trying to get to come in to the ark of safety. Amen. Praise God. You know, it don't say it's in the Word of God, but have you ever wondered when God shut that door on that ark? Amen. How many people was outside of that glory to God scratching? Amen. I believe they were scratching their hands, pulling into the blood. Praise God. It don't say it in the Word, but you've got to feel God. Amen. You've got to get in the spiritual realm. Yes. Amen. Just talk to God. Say, Lord, just how did these people act? Amen. That day. Yeah. Come on, brother. God. God's merciful, church. Yes, he is. is. God is merciful. Yes. But he, he's wanting people to serve him right. Amen. Amen. Yes. This church, amen, it's a, it's a great church. Amen. But the church that we're going to serve God in is a real church. Amen. This church ought to be full. People make excuses not to come to the house of God. Amen. amen. I don't understand why nobody wants to be in the house of God. Amen. Jesus Christ, he died and he shed his blood that we could come to him. Uh -huh. Praise God. Have you ever just wandered down through time from the garden, even down to where we're at now, how the people have tried to, to be in the bow of the word of God to fit their modern ways? And we sang that song here sometimes. Somebody does. I don't know who it is. Praise God. They tried to change the Bible to fit their modern ways. Praise God, but there ain't no way that you can be in God's Word to fit your lifestyle. Amen. Praise God, because it's a straight way. Amen. And that's what we're going to have to walk. We're yes. going to have to walk the straight and narrow way to make heaven their home. Praise Amen. God. People want to slumber. They want to sleep on God. Praise God. You know, that's like, the, I don't know, who brought Larry, maybe. I don't know. You know who's talking. Amen. You know, I want to desire to read God's Word. Uh, as much as I used to when I was young. You know, I've got lazy on that. Praise God, it's a shame. We're living in the last days. We've got to be living close to the end. Praise God, and here we are. We're, we got lazy or we're slumbering or we're sleeping. Praise God, when we are to be reading the Word of God day in and day out, praise God that God can feed us with the bread of life. Yes, he is. Amen. That's, that's what we need. We need to have a desire to do more for God. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Yep. You know, you just talk about Brother Dennis talking about these people. Praise God, you talk to people. Man, they just laugh at you. They don't want to hear nothing about Jesus Christ. Amen. They think they're all right with their self. Yep. But Amen, God's called up people that's called out. Amen. You know? And, and I know that the Lord, amen, can call anybody he wants. Praise God, but he's going to call them under the highway of holiness. You know, and it talks about he set a watchman up to watch over you. Now, there's a, 
Brother Larry is probably the watchman over this church. Praise God. I guess that's how that works. Praise God. If we follow after the word of God, amen, we will follow him as close as we can. Praise God as long as he follows God in the right way. And that's what it's all about. Because somebody is going to give account for other people. Praise God. You know, I've heard Brother Larry, I've heard some of Brother Bo, these guys. Amen. I don't want no blood dripping off my hands. Amen. Praise God for not telling somebody the truth about Amen. God's word. Amen. Amen. I just want God to be pleased with me. Yes. Praise Amen. God. Yes. You know, just like he says, stop by Holy Ghost and tell me what to do. Yes. I want God to be pleased with me, church. Amen. Praise God. I want God to use me for his yes. glory. Yeah. Amen. I can't, I may not be able to reach my son. Praise God, because God knows I, I've tried. Praise God, but maybe one of these other brothers can. Maybe someone else can. Yes. Praise God, it may go that way for you lost children. But we can't keep praying. We can't stop praying for our families. We can't stop praying for our church family. Praise God. When I make my journey around here, I call out the people in this church and their family. Praise God, I call out my family. And it's up to God, amen, to honor that. Glory to God, but where it's going to be me wins a soul, or Brother Bo, or Brother Larry, Brother Josh, or Brother James, somebody like that. Amen. God is in control of that church. Amen. But we can't keep, we can't give in to the world. No, we can't wink, we can't wink at the world. We can't flirt with the world. Amen. Praise God and thank God to bless us. Amen. You know, I, I saw this thing don't know exactly how it's quoted. It's talking about you can't live, you can't live like the devil and have, and have God pay you bills or something like that. You know, if we want the blessings of God, amen, we're going to have to live pure and holy and clean before him. Yeah. Amen, we're going to have to come out from among the world and be separate. I want God, I want a light to shine out in a dark, dark world. This world's dark. If you ever noticed out here in the world now, about everybody dies, amen, they preach right in the heaven. Yeah. Amen, they're right with God. One, one moment they'll be praying for this and praying for that, and the next moment they're using foul language, praying in the next story they put on their Facebook or whatever. Amen, God ain't into that. God's in a, in a, in a, in a sanctified, holiness church. He's in yes. a Yes. Amen. He's in a place that he's, a, you know, the Bible said at one time he winked at ignorance, but now he calls all men on repentance. You know, and I believe if we ever going to make it, we're going to have to live pure and holy before Amen. God. Amen. You know, we, we sometimes, I believe this, I mean, I'm not slashing nobody. I believe sometimes we in this church, in our church, there's times we can't even get along sometimes. And is that right with God? No. Praise God. We ought to all be able to get along in the house of God. Amen. You know, sometimes I, I think sometimes we're worse than real family. We, we like to argue, fight, and bicker. Praise God. But we ought to be giving God all glory, praise and honor. Yeah. And yeah. let God have his way in our life. You know, because, you know, if this church is ever going to have to, if this church ever fills up, it'll be by the move of God. Amen in a righteous way. Praise God. You know, the Lord is able to do this. And, and if, if he spoke to Brother Larry, it will be full one day. Yep. Praise God. Amen. But it's going to be full of people that needs God's help. And amen, that's crying out for help. Praise God. You know, we, we talk about these drunkards, these drug addicts, all these things like this. They need God's help. Yes. But all at the same time, we need his help. Amen. We need to quit bickering and fighting and fussing. We need to quit complaining. Yep. You know, that's why God destroyed as many of them in the wilderness because of murmur, complaining. Yep. After him delivered them out of the land of Egypt, praise God. After him showing all those signs and wonders, praise God, even after he parted the Red Sea, they still murmured, complaining. Uh -huh. We ain't really got nothing to murmur, complain about. God's been good to all of us tonight. Yes, amen. Praise yes. God. Amen. I'm, I'm going to read a few things here. And I just want the church to realize this. God called us out. 
to do right. When I first come to God, I, I didn't know, know a whole lot about my, my mom used to come here to this church. And I'm not saying this to be mean about my mother, because I love her to death. But in my life, I learned more about God than my mother every time I talk. God showed me more. I desired more. And I'm grateful for what God has shown me. You know, I can't go, I can't go on what Brother Bo believes and what Brother Larry believes, Brother Lawrence. I've got to believe what the Word says. Yeah. You know, if we all really serve God but fearless and in the right way, we should be able to line up as close to this as we possibly can. Yes. So I'm going to read these scriptures that I feel it's necessary in a, a you know, I think a lot of people think, and there is going to be a great number. It talks about a great number, no man can know it's going to be saved. But yeah. look at all the people in this world today. There's going to be a many unlost. Uh -huh. And it, this is what, it talks about a remnant. God has got a remnant of people. Yes. yes. And when that remnant is fulfilled, God's going to come back. I read, looked this up. It says a small remaining quality of something. You know, when we when we look and we talk about the the, the rapture, <coughs> and I believe this, and if it if it seeing somebody just talk to me about it after a while, God ain't got two brides. When God calls his bride away, it's going to be when that 144,000 joins that bride. He ain't going to take one bunch of people away and come back with that 144,000. He can't be. God ain't got no mistress. He ain't no adult. God's got a chosen people. And that's what it's going to be. If, if, God, is, if God is a merciful God and he is, you got to think how many people over in Israel, I think like 9 million, like 9 million, and then you got to look and say, here's 144,000 coming up out of that. That don't mean they ain't going to be so saved before that time, but you look how many people right there in that little area is, is, is going to a devil's hell because they <laughs> neglected the truth of God. And you know, God, if you if you look and you read and you understand some things, there's a lot of people that's coming up out of these denominational churches that's getting right, getting baptized in Jesus' name, and getting the Holy Ghost. Something that I never really thought that I'd ever see, but I'm seeing it. And God is able to keep working that way until he gets his number. Praise God. Let me read this to you. Jeremiah 39 40, it's like he, he calls, he, he's calling out the poor. And then 1 Kings 19 and 30 and 31, it's talking about the zeal of God. He, he's put a zeal in somebody's heart. Amen. And that's what we are to have. We are to have zeal in our heart to do what's right. In Romans 11 and 15, he talks about grace. You know, he said, My grace is sufficient. And that, that's what, you know, God, God's a loving God. God's going to make a way for us if we try to get out of things that we get in. You know, it says in the Revelation, no, Romans, talking about that grace, it says, God has always chosen only a remnant out of the nation of Israel. You know, God wanted all of them, the Father even believed him. But as time went on, they, they drifted away. They went a hoarding. And they've done that. I believe a lot of it was called God said destroy everything in the land. And they got down and they got lazy. They didn't destroy all the people that was in the land. They didn't get rid of all their idol gods. And that caused a snare in their life and caused them to go astray from God. And, you know, that's the sad part about it. If something's in our life that will cause us to be 
uh, lukewarm on God or cold on God, we need to get rid of it and let God, let the Holy Ghost warm us up. Praise God. You know, back when, uh, in the first Kings 1918, when God tells Elijah that he has 7,000 reserved. You know, back then, Elijah thought, man, I'm the only one left. Yeah. God said, I've got 7,000. Yeah. And ain't never bowed down a bell. Yeah. Amen. And that's, that's what it's going to be. See, he took a remnant of people out of Israel then. Okay, amen. It says, the Lord will find the ancestor path. His ways, his character, and his life. Selfless, the death of self. This is the true path to love God, God's way, and serve his people in alignment with his perfect will. Number two said serve as a reflecting in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ, who was a servant leader, serving others, being humble and meek, serving always, flowing from the place of selflessness. <coughs> Number three is suffering. He says, which in fact trials, storms, and giving up all we have in cherishing to seek God, way understanding that go through trials and storms of life in actions, a trust built, seeming not a form of punishment. Sacrifice. God, the sacrifice of love to mankind, sending his own son, Jesus Christ, to die for us, and how we shall his kind of sacrifice for others. You know, sometimes we've got to make sacrifices for others. And probably probably not too many of us doing that, but we need to. Spiritual talks about a relationship with the Holy Ghost is a key to stay on the ancestor paths and it deeply our walk with the Father. Proverbs 3 and 6 says, In all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Psalms uh, 16 and 11. You may know, know to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your promises, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. It said, The Lord may firm the steps of one who delights in him. Psalm 119, 105 says, The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. Amen. So God's made a way. He showed us how to get back on the old path. Uh -huh. But the greater of all these is, is the love of God. The love of God works out the fruit yeah, of the Spirit. Without, without God's fruit uh, uh, multiplying in our life, we ain't really going to please God the way we need to until we get to that place. You know, I just want, want you to know that God wants us to stay on this straight, narrow path. He wants us to live clean. He wants us to live holy and righteous. And He wants us, really, to be a help to one another. Amen. You know, those people, I was, I was some years ago, I don't know if I was going here up Brother Gary, and I got, I got down, got down in the, the dumps, they said, I just sat at the house probably for a month or so. Johnny Curry up the road here uh, came up and talked to me. He said, Jeff, you know you, you need to get back to the house of God. And, uh, and I did. I did go back. So if we see somebody slacking, we need to encourage them the best we know how. You know, that's like, uh, I don't know, not saying this to embarrass her, but she ain't here, but Sister Amber, she's been missing a lot of church lately. I don't know what her reason is. But every night she ain't here, I'll go on there and I'll say, I miss you at church tonight. Mm -hmm. Or we miss you at church tonight. Love and prayers. You know, 
that's what we ought to do. We ought to do that to everybody that we can. Because it's our duty to try to keep people in the house of God. You know, and that's what, I, I want to please God. I want God to have his way in my life. You know, I'm, I'm not really, uh, sometimes I'm not much of a talker as I am a listener. But sometimes we, we got to make an effort to help someone get back into the house of God. You know, and that's what God expects of us. We've got to love them enough to be worried about them. And, and uh, you know, that's what God expects out of his people. You know, if, if I would go miss and hear, let's say, a month, would anybody call me and say, where you been? You know, I don't know that, but I ain't going to miss no month to see. Because that's just the way I am. But God is able, and I, I hope I said something that maybe somebody think about. And, uh, do what God, you know, just do what God wants. That's, that's the most important thing. We got we got to obey God yes. and let God have His way in our life. You know, I, I like to I like to not only see my son saved and my daughters, but you know, my grandchildren. But there's a lot of people in here I call out your children's names, and uh, <coughs> uh, I know God can save them. Uh, if I didn't believe that, then then I, I probably need to repent because God can save anybody. He saved the he saved a wretch like me one time. Man, I was, I was evil, wandering, and God saved me and filled me with his Holy Ghost. And it stuck him a long time, but I, I know what I know what his love is. I know what it is to love people. Praise God, I know what it is to forgive people and go on. Because that's what God wants. He, God wants us to be just like him. You know, and, and that's that's, that's a, sometimes a hard saying, but we need to strive to be perfect, just like Jesus Christ did. Well, I'm going to turn this back over to Brother Larry. Jesus, a great big cheer for the Lord. It's always a good place to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. I was thinking about what you have to say as you came to me, and I think you, in so many words he had mentioned, just talk about the remnant, amen. It's the remnant, and like I don't know if you could use every generation or in that time. And then Jeff was bringing it out about back in certain times of the Bible, there was a remnant every time there was something there. God had people, amen. It is a, it is a small, I mean, it's like a small number. We don't know the number. If, if, you know what I'm saying? It don't mean that man don't know how to say the number, but it's a number that no man knows, amen. That no man can number is what that, that's what that means. It don't have to have been 10. It's a number that no man could number because God, God knows what he's looking for. He knows how many it is. Amen. And we, we thank God for his word. And we just want to stand firm upon his word. That's why uh, that song, I, I was expecting others to be here tonight, but they're not here. But that's all right. God knows who he, he wants here for that time, for that service. Amen. So uh, let's keep praying for one another, lifting each other up. That's what it's about. Yeah. It's showing the love of God toward one another. Then we'll see the people. See, when you show them the love, that's why people changed. Amen. In the, in the Bible times, so some didn't change. There's some stayed evil. You can't you can't change evil if it don't want to be changed. Amen. But if we show people love, we'll be saying a lot. What about if you if there's ten comes in and you help two? Amen. You're still going to show love to the ten because all the, them two is still watching the same as the ten was watching. Amen. Because you, you can't say, well, they was you know, they wasn't saved. They come in lost. Ten came in lost. Two got saved, and they stayed saved. You may have more than that come to the altar, but we still got to show them love because they're sitting there at the same time, seeing how you react to all of them, and that's what's going to change their life. Amen. So it ain't that, uh, and, and 
It is a way that we got to live. It's a clean way. It's a holy way. And in that, Mr. James just talked about this on the way over to church today. There's such a fine line. There is. Not everything's a sin. Amen. Not everything is a sin. Now, you can get in that place. I was in a place one time. The Lord has really helped me. I was in a place at one time. I just told Sister Jamie one time. I said, I'm going to go live under the rock somewhere and get away from everybody. Because that's where I And she said, you can't do that. I was to that place where I thought everything that around me was a sin. And it's not. The Bible says. God created all things and he saw that it was good. Do you know what happened to it? Man came along Amen. and corrupted it. Amen. Everything that God made was good, but man corrupted it. So we must be just talking about this on the way over. And uh, I, I really enjoy uh, the word of God. I mean, what Brother Jeff brought every night. It is a clean way. It's a holy way. It's a righteous way. That's all it's getting there. Sin ain't getting there. Amen. 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 It's not, it, it will not go. I don't care. You might try to. Uh, he's bringing up that part about, and that's been all through the Bible. They have rest of scriptures. They have been the scriptures. Try to suit their modern ways. Amen. So we do. We love the Lord. We appreciate him for all he's doing. If anybody needs prayer, anybody wants to come and pray at the altar, the altar is always open. Amen. And we do. We we got people that you believe this or not, they're watching these. They're watching these. Everything that we say or do, it will tell on us out there. Amen. Let's get a little pray for Sister Teresa. She's going to stand in for Huggs' mom. He believes God can move. Amen. I believe God can move. And I don't know if she go to church. No. Her bowels are swollen. And they're talking about surgery. Her husband actually called the hospital. Uh, Amos is going to get up and she can't eat. When she's drinking her coffee, just eat up and she's having a good breeze. So she's going to She's going to touch the Lord. Most of all, she needs to give her life to the Lord. Surrender to Jesus. Amen. We can't say God can't because God can't. If God changed for the changes. I thought about it. You know, now I know he's saved and he's on his way to heaven. But he at one time, you hear his testimony. He didn't believe in God. There was no God. But look at it now. He's preaching the gospel. Amen. So God can change. If God can change tonight. Uh, Brother Hubby's uh, mom, God can change your heart. Amen. He can touch your body and change your heart. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus. Father, Lord Jesus. Father, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I believe God is going to remove all this situation. You know, if we, if we really believe, really believe what we pray, we'll see a great outcome of what God can do. We can see the manifestation of God and His power of what He can really do. Instead of when we, we can pray one prayer and step over in our mind and doubt and you've knocked everything out that you just said. Amen. So, uh, we have any